Hello and welcome back to another session. Today's session is going to be about AWS Cloud Formation. Infrastructure as Code is very popular these days and it allows you to create and manage your infrastructure by simply writing code. The service that allows you to do infrastructure as code within AWS is Cloud Formation. Let's see how it works with samples. It's better to learn cloud formation by looking at practical sample templates rather than a theoretical session. So this will be our only slide just to cover the basic three components of cloud formation. The first main component is a template. So a template is a text file which can be in either JSON or YAML format. This acts as a kind of blueprint for building your resources in AWS. You can specify multiple resources in a single template along with input and output parameters. And when this template is imported into CloudFormation, it creates a single stack with all these resources and AWS takes care of provisioning the resources within the stack. So a template is a simple text file with a list of resources. Which brings us to the next component, stack. All the resources within a template are managed as a single unit in AWS, which is called a stack. You can manage, that is create, update, or delete the resources by managing the stack. It will become more clearer when we look at the sample. Finally, change sets. If you are willing to make any changes to the resources in a stack, you update the stack. The update might impact your running resources. For example, if you are trying to rename a running RDS instance, it is not an in-place operation. Instead, CloudFormation will delete and recreate the RDS instance. Such type of inf information will be conveyed to you by change sets. So it comes into picture while you are trying to update resources within a stack. So the whole CloudFormation revolves around those three components. Let's explore more by looking at the sample template. We will take a look at six templates now, each being an improvised version of the previous one. The improvement here is making the template more generic and reusable and which enables the automation. So this is the version one, which is a basic template that creates an EC2 instance. I've used YAML format. First thing to keep in mind is that resources section is the only mandatory section in cloud formation. Here, the first section is AWS template format. Currently, there is only one version, which is 2010. Then the description, it mainly for developers to understand what the cloud formation does. In this case, it creates an EC2 instance in US East region. Next is the main one, resources. Each resource should be given a logical ID, which is a unique ID within the template, and it must be alphanumeric. Then comes the resource type, which is used to specify the type of the resource. In this case, it's an EC2 instance. Finally, the properties. There is an exhaustive list of properties for each resource, few of them being mandatory, and the rest will be set to default values in case it's not specified. In this case, image ID and instance type are mandatory, so I have mentioned them. So this is the basic version. It just creates a specific Linux type EC2 instance. So it's very restrictive. Let's see the next version. We are introducing a new section here, which is called as mappings. I have listed each region with a corresponding AMI in that region. Then we could reference this mapping in the image ID rather than hard coding it to a specific image. So we could reference the mapping by using an intrinsic function in CloudFormation find and map in this case it takes the mapping region and the value as the inputs and it returns the specific image which is mapped to that region there are several other intrinsic functions available so also notice how the region is being referenced here this is called as pseudo parameters aws provides a list of them so now this version can be used across regions instead of being restrictive to a single region. Moving on to the third version. In this version, we are going to make the instance size configurable as well. In most of the projects, you will have various environments like dev, test, prod, etc. to go through your development cycle and deliver to customers. 
Usually the dev or test instances might not need large instances when compared to prod. So by having a smaller size and lower environments, you will save some cost. So the third version is going to cover this. We are introducing a parameter section here. This allows you to get inputs from the user while executing a cloud formation template. So we have added environment parameter here, which allows you to specify one of the environment values at the time of execution. And based on that, I have added another map here, which has an equivalent size value for each environment type. That is dev, test, and prod. Then we could use that in the instance type rather than hard coding the value. So this makes our template reusable across environments, which comes handy in setting up continuous delivery pipelines. Okay, now we are in the fourth version where we are going to see how to define multiple resources within a template. In this case, I'm adding a volume to the instance it's very simple. You just add another logical ID to the resources section and the type of the resource you want, volume in our sample, then its corresponding properties, here availability zone and size. Then in order to attach the volume to the instance, I have used the reference of the volume in the volume section under the instance. So this volume may not be always required. That brings us to the fifth version. You may want it only in case of production and skip the creation in lower environments. So how to specify such conditional resources? For this purpose, there is a separate section in CloudFormation called as conditions, which lets you to specify each condition with a logical ID and use them in the resources section. So I've added a new condition here called as create prod resources and checked for environment equals production then we have to add this in the conditions attributes of the resource which we are trying to create conditionally so if we scroll down there is a volume here so here i have added a condition section called as create prod resources also I have moved a mount attachment to the mount point as that needs to be done conditionally as well so this is our fifth version. Finally, let's move on to the last version. In the beginning of the session, we saw that we can manage the resources by managing the entire stack. That is, if you want to create, update, or delete the resources in a stack, then you have to create, delete, or modify the resources. So when you delete the stack, you end up deleting all the resources created by the stack. However, you can control this for certain resources by attaching a deletion policy to them. So like in this case, I have added a deletion policy to volume mentioning as snapshot. So under EC2 volume section, you can see that there is a deletion policy called snapshot which means when you delete the stack, CloudFormation will automatically take a snapshot of the volume and store it for you. You can even specify retain in order to retain the resource itself. So that's how you use deletion policies. Also, I have added an output section if in case you want to return the data based on the resources created. We can keep improving the templates even further by adding creation policies, bootstrap scripts, and more. However, let's consider this as our final template for time being. Next, let's get into the console and see how well it works. So we are in the AWS console now. Let's select CloudFormation. And from there, let's select Create Stack option, which allows you to create a stack. And you have three options here. You can either select a template from your local or use a sample template which CloudFormation offers us. Or you can create a template using CloudFormation Designer, which is an online designer which CloudFormation offers again. So I'm just going to go with uploading local template. Again, here you have two options. Either you can specify an S3 URL or you can go with a local option. 
so i am selecting a file from local and even if you select a file from local notice that it gets automatically uploaded to s3 and you have an option to view it in designer it shows the resources available in the template and their associations you can even edit the template on the go you can either add or remove the resources so here i'm adding something so and then you can uh, specify the associations by using the yaml it will automatically generate the uh, basic yaml structure for you so this is an easier way to do it for now let's not change anything and go back and go with the next step here you have an option to give a stack name in this case i'm just going to go with ec2 instance with volume it has to be alphanumeric and only numbers and dashes are allowed and next is the parameter section so parameter section is the inputs which we specified in the cloud formation template in our case it was just one parameter which is environment i'm going with prod so that we can create both an instance and a volume so and just notice that i changed the instance type to t2 micro even for prod uh, just to stay within the free limits and then tags are optional which is attached to the stack and the next section is uh, specifying the permissions so uh, it is very important to select the proper role because cloud formation allow uses this role to create modify or delete the resources if you don't specify a role then it uses the logged in user in this case it's the iam user which already has the admin privileges so we are good to go with that then you have a couple of options like stack policy which helps in preventing accident and deletion of certain resources when explicitly called out then you can even state the specific rollback configurations like what happens when the stack creation fails how do you want the rollback to happen by default it deletes the already created resources so let's just go with the default option then you get to review your options which are selected so it shows the template url and then the description and all the the options which you selected while creating the stack like the parameters and also there is a cool option which shows you the cost estimate keep in mind that cloud formation itself doesn't cost you any money on its own but whatever resources that are created through cloud formation will cost cost you money so in this case it shows you an estimate of what's the charges which is applied uh, by creating the ec2 instance and a volume so this will come in handy for your cost estimation now let's go back and create the stack so just review everything once most of the options are selected as default so let's go ahead with create stack so once you hit on create stack the events tab shows you the progress of resource creation so cloud formation understands your template and knows which resource is dependent on the other and creates them in that order here ec2 instance is being created first because your volume wants the ec2 instance to be present first it takes a couple of minutes you can keep re refreshing in order to see the progress i'm just going to pause the video here and come back okay we are back now after a couple of minutes as you can see the stack creation is complete now let's take a look at the events first it has created the ec2 instance it started 9:45 and then you can see that it has created the volume and followed by the attaching volume to the instance which is the mount point so it has taken approximately around 2 minutes so it has started at 9:45 and ended at 9:47 uh so it has created all the resources so if we go to the resources section you can see the list of resources which are created as part of the stack 
It displays the physical ID of all the resources which are created. And then moving on to the output section, this displays the output parameters that you mentioned in the output section of the template. In our case, it was the instance ID and the availability zone in which the VM was created. Now let's take a look at the resources itself. First, the EC2 instance. Let's click on the physical ID, which takes us to the EC2 dashboard. As you can see, the instance is in running state and it has the default values wherever we haven't mentioned a specific one. And then there should be a volume as well. If we navigate to the volume section. So there is a volume. And this volume has to be attached to the EC2 instance. So if we look at the attachment information, it has an instance ID which got created as part of the template as well. Now, the deletion of the uh, stack will delete the resources as well. So let's do the cleanup. Going back to stack, select the particular stack and you have a number of stack actions that you can perform like updating the stack for now we are going to delete it so the deletion will be in the reverse order of creation we can go ahead and look into the events so the first thing which is being deleted is the mount point so that was the last which was created so the volume has to be detached from the instance first. So once the EC2 mount point is deleted, the next is deleting the volume itself. Uh, but however, remember that we mentioned the deletion policy to be snapshot for, a, for the volume. So it creates a snapshot first and then deletes the volume. So it takes a couple of minutes. So it has created the snapshot and the next step should be to delete the volume itself. And there you go. It has deleted the volume too. In the meantime, let's take a look at the volumes. Moving back to EC2 dashboard. If you refresh it, yeah, the volume is gone. The one with a one GB one. And then there should be a new snapshot which is created. If you go into snapshot, so there is a corresponding volume which is created for snapshot which is created for the volume. And if we go back to cloud formation, hopefully the EC2 instance should be deleted by now. Uh, it's still in progress. So a couple of refreshes. Yeah, it has deleted. So deleting the last resource of the stack deletes the stack itself. So let's go back into the EC2 dashboard again. And if we look into the instances, uh, the status has changed to terminated. So if we check the status of the stack, uh, the stack will be gone uh, because all the resources within the stack is deleted. So that's it for today, guys. Hope you found it useful. Please let me know if you have any questions regarding this session or cloud formation in general. See you soon in the next section. Thank you.